for CSEC. Hello students, today's topic is the mole concept and in this particular lesson we will learn to calculate the mass of a reactant or product in a chemical reaction. So let's begin. Let's say you are posed with a question that reads, when heated calcium carbonate decomposes to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Calculate the mass of calcium oxide produced by the decomposition of 50 grams of calcium carbonate. In this instance, you are required to calculate the mass of a product, but the procedure will be the same if you are asked to calculate the mass of a reactant. So where do you begin? Well, the first step is to write the chemical balanced equation. It therefore becomes important for you to be able to correctly write formula and balance equations. If your formula or equation is incorrect at this stage, it means that you are already proceeding with errors. So if you don't already know them, please learn your ions, practice writing formula and balancing equation. So let's get into writing our equation. Now the question says that calcium carbonate decomposes to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. We therefore have to write the formula for calcium carbonate. Now the calcium ion is Ca2+, and the carbonate anion is CO3-2-. Now we can clearly see that the charges of these ions are the same, so the formula would simply be CaCO3. It says that this calcium carbonate decomposes or breaks down. Now there are no other reactants. So we simply put our arrow and we can write heat. It breaks down to produce calcium oxide. So we have to write the formula for calcium oxide. Again, calcium is Ca plus 2. The oxide anion is O2 minus. Again, their charges are balanced, so the formula is simply CaO. And the question says carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide here is molecular, and therefore the name gives us the formula. So the first part is carbon, then we see di, which is the prefix meaning two, and oxide from oxygen. So it's carbon and two oxygens, literally. So the form will be CO2. Okay? Then we have to balance the equation. And in balancing the equation, we have to ensure that we have equal number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. So on the reactant side here, we have one calcium. We also see there's only one calcium on the product side. Carbon, there's one carbon on the reactant side and one carbon here on the product side. There are three oxygens here on the reactant side and on the product side we have one plus two makes three. So it therefore means that our equation is already balanced. So there we have our chemical balanced equations. I have put in the state symbols. Our next step would be to identify the key information. What important information do you take from the question? Well, again, if you read the question, it says that the calcium carbonate decomposes to produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And we're asked to calculate the mass of the calcium oxide. Very important, we must know what we're solving for. That is produced by the decomposition of 50 grams of calcium carbonate. So I have identified my key information there. What this really means is that we're only really concerned with our calcium carbonate and our calcium oxide. The carbon dioxide at this point is not important. It was only important in ensuring that we had a balanced equation because our equation must be balanced in order for us to solve. Our next step would be to calculate the moles for the substance that information was given for. 
and again if you look at the question carefully the only information that was really given was that we we're using 50 grams of calcium carbonate so in this step we are going to calculate the moles of calcium carbonate now you should recall that when we're dealing with masses the number of moles is calculated by dividing the mass over the molar mass now the mass was given in the question the question says it's 50 grams but the molar mass was not given so we have to go ahead and calculate the molar mass now you should recall that the molar mass is calculated by summing the relative atomic masses of each of the atom within the compound now I have not provided you with the relative atomic masses here but they will be given now calcium there has a relative atomic mass of 40 plus carbon which is 12 and then we have three oxygens each having a relative atomic mass of 16 and that would give us a total of 100 grams per mole okay now that we have the molar mass we could go ahead and calculate the moles so the moles of the calcium carbonate would be our 50 grams divided by 100 grams per mole and that would give us 0 0.5 moles so there we have it the moles of the calcium carbonate once we have found the moles there, our next step is to find the number of moles of the other substance using the mole ratio. Remember, in this equation, this particular question, we're only concerned about the calcium carbonate and the calcium oxide. We have already found the moles of the calcium carbonate, so now our duty is to find the moles of the calcium oxide. And of course, we use the mole ratio. Now, a chemical equation, a balanced chemical equation, actually is an equation of moles. When we balance an equation and we put the coefficients in front of the numbers to balance it, those coefficients are giving us the ratio of moles. In our case, our equation was already balanced, so we did not have to put any numbers. But not putting a number simply means that it is 1. So our chemical equation is basically saying that 1 mole, sorry, 1 mole of calcium carbonate decomposes to give us 1 mole of calcium oxide and 1 mole of carbon dioxide. Again, we're not too concerned with the carbon dioxide. So, there, so we then therefore use this ratio of moles to calculate the moles of calcium oxide as we are not given any other information for calcium oxide. So from the balance equation we can see there that the mole ratio is a 1 to 1 ratio. 1 mole of calcium carbonate produces 1 mole of calcium oxide. Now, from the question, we know that we have produced 0 0.5 moles of our calcium carbonate. So, if we have a 1 to 1 ratio and we've produced 0 0.5 moles of, we use 0 0.5 moles of calcium carbonate, how many moles of calcium oxide would we produce? Because it is a 1 to 1 ratio, the moles of our calcium oxide is going to be the same as the moles of our calcium carbonate and that is simply because it is a one to one ratio so we could say it is 0 0.5 multiplied by 1 which also gives us 0 0.5 moles now we will not always meet a simple one to one ratio sometimes it may be a two to one ratio a one to two ratio or even more complex than that how then would we figure out how to calculate the number of moles of the other substance if it is not a simple one to one ratio 
Another trick that I like to employ is to draw up a table and we put in our substances. So we have our calcium carbonate on this side and our calcium oxide on that side. And we put in our ratio from the equation. Our ratio from the equation is a 1 to 1 ratio. In reality though, we have only used 0 0.5 moles. 0 0.5 moles of calcium carbonate. So I put in 0 0.5 here. And we're trying to figure out the moles of calcium oxide, which is an unknown. Let's call that X. Right? And then we can do a, a simple process of cross multiplication to solve for X. And that would give you the answer if it is that you do not have a simple one to one ratio. So we've now found the moles of calcium oxide to be 0 0.5 as well. And our final step would be, of course, to solve our equation. Now, solve means here to find the answer, which was the mass of the calcium oxide that we were asked to produce. So how do we do that? We're solving for mass. Now, again, you should recall that in order to calculate the mass when we're given the number of moles is to multiply the number of moles by our molar mass. Okay? And we've already found our moles, number of moles to be 0 0.5. So we have to go ahead and find our molar mass. Now again, our molar mass is found by summing the relative atomic masses of all of the atoms in the particular substance and again those atomic masses are often provided so let's go ahead and do that so it's calcium oxide so 40 for the calcium plus oxygen would be 16 which gives us a total of 56 grams per mole so the mass therefore would be our 0 0.5 moles multiplied by 56 grams per mole and that would give us a total of 28 grams. So the answer to our question is 28 grams. So in a nutshell we write our balance equation. We calculate the moles of the substance for which information is given. Then we use the mole ratio to calculate the moles of the substance that we are solving for. And finally, we solve. Thank you for your attention. And go ahead and practice some of these questions on your own. Chemistry.